Hoje nós temos Today we have a sharing of a person who was in the Honkador Mountains and she went back from there with a greater inner call and with a great need of pray, of taking a prayerful life and she would like to know how that might happen so suddenly. Well, you know that the Honkador Mountains have has a history, a very ancient history, and it has been said that there extraterrestrial beings were incarnated on the planet and there they built a temple that we know as the Temple of Ibis. And this temple, and from this temple, today there are only left ruins, but there is many stories about that place. And she went back from there with this inner impulse and even without understanding very well what happened, it seems that she should persist in this work of prayer. But she said that she also brought a will and an intention of abandon everything and only dedicate to prayer. But that she still has a son, a 17-year-old son, under her, her responsibility, and that she is then doubtful of what to do. Well, if you have, if you has a karmic responsibility that you consider to be serious, so you would have to take some time to see how your inner world indicates you something. And while you wait your inner world to pronounce, if it doesn't pronounce soon and wait a little, you do not get impressed because the intention is worth. The intention is worth and if you went to Honkador and you were before all of those signs that are theirs, that are there, signs of an ancient civilization, if you were stimulated to change your life, then you might have this intention and keep your regular life until you have an answer because through your letter you are very anxious for having that answered because it has been a few months that you were there. So you keep that intention and this offer. Offer to the high, offer to your superior being or to your spirit or to God. You keep that offer to the high and you wait. Do not get impressed with the delay of an answer or if there is, there will be no answer, you do not get impressed by that because your intention is worth and on the case of you do not, you're not able to leave your son who depends a lot on you and you have, you don't have a way of leaving him to someone else, you keep that intention and take care of your karmic life as usual, as always. And that intention spiritually with, will be worth and worth a lot. And it's necessary to do not have expect expectations for having that answer. The Honkador Mountains are a very special place spiritually and very sensitive to our aspirations. Sensitive because 
although the temple of Ibis, it has already been disabled in a certain point of view because its work had already finished. All of that is very magnetic. So the intention that you have that are directed to there would have that effect, but look to be in a very spiritual level, level in a very not personal level, because um, look to do that very in an inner way, in a inner silence, because then you will connect with the most with the higher plans of the Honkador, that's very important because being a, an area that was disabled in a certain point of view in its temple, it's possible that there, there, there may exist some mixed forces because if that was disabled, we do not know what today might be moving around there. With that, I'm not saying that it's a negative place. On the contrary, that there is always anchored there a very powerful force. But it's good to be before of something like that, that it was so important and that it still is. You have the, you be careful to not be involved of being neutral on your offer but very sincere. I am speaking like that about a temple that was very active, that was decisive to the planet and that now is in another situation. I'm speaking like that because that temple and that area was all dedicated to the new genetic code. There is a project of a new genetic code to humanity, and that area represents that change. However, uh, the temple has been disabled, but that is a symbol of a new stage of humanity. In a way that that's what I can say to you, and you be careful to not interrupt a karmic work that you are doing to your son because if it has to be of you take on a contemplative life a prayerful life if it has to be that it will appear a destination to the son but do not force anything and keep your aspiration And another person is asking, why triggering tri never smiles? Really, I do not have that as a truth. Maybe it's because you always saw me when I wasn't smiling, but it's not true that I. It's not true that I do not smile. What I said in some sharings is that before what we see in the world and before the way that humanity reacts to so many planetary needs and needs of the human humanity itself. What I said that is that in a principle, when we see the world, there is no reason to laugh. I said that many times, but not that I do not smile, because laughing is, I really, recognize that I don't laugh because there is no reason to laugh but that I don't smile no because a smile sometimes is a way of communication very favorable way of communication when you smile to someone else you save many words you save formal talks of course the laugh has to be a smile and has to be a reflex of a movement of the soul because otherwise there is no reason to smile. But soul may send to a person you were talking to, soul may 
manifest itself through a smile, you know, so that I never said that you shouldn't smile, and I never said that I do not smile. I do not remember that. And here, a person is in a karmic family, and it's in a karmic family where she always had many difficulties, and today she's with 32 years, and she's getting tired of this family contacts. She's saying that her family was always very problematic, and that she grew in the middle of many conflicts between her mother and her father, and since a child she's in contact with extreme situations. And always, when, she, when she's usually praying before the situations, that she feels she feels very calm, and that she always had a very strong connection with nature. And that many times she look for being calm and balanced in contact with nature. Well, you here have to participate of this karmic life, right? Because your father and your mother depends on you. So you have to participate of this karmic life. And when things get, get a little difficult, you then look, you seek for a connection with nature as you have this facility, a connection, for a connection with nature, it's not necessary for you to be in a forest or outdoors. This is an inner thing. It's a, when you think about nature, you are already in contact with it, understand? And if you, so if you live in a city where nature is very far with all its beauty, it doesn't matter, you concentrate and you isolate a little, you be quiet, calm, and silence, and you think about nature, you connect with nature as you see it. And this will make a great effect in those moments. And she's, she says that sometimes it comes to her an impulse of find someone that has an energy like hers, and that she sh sometimes has this very mixed feelings, and that deep down she feels that she's looking for this person. Look, be careful with that, because you might be influenced by many ideas of the current days, of the current times, and it's better for you do not think about this subject because when we should, by karma, by faith, when we should connect with someone that has an energy that might come to complement yours and you complement the person's energy, when this is true and with this written in your life, this person will appear to you in a certain point. And you're not only going to recognize the person, but the person will recognize you too. You do not need to look for that, because when it is true, it will happen by itself. It happens naturally, and you are going to recognize each other. But when you, but if you keep looking because you have that idea that you have to find a person with whose the energy matches yours, if you have that idea, your mind might attract someone and create a situation and delude you and de deceive you. You have to push away that idea and be in your work of prayer, you be in your work of inner retreat, in your 
work of contact with nature and let time goes by and things will manifest itself, things will present itself to you or not. Now, she is saying that she would like to know what is the mission of her soul and that she was born in the sign of Capricorn. Well, we here do not used to do astrology, but to remember you, if you were born in the sign of Capricorn, Capricorn is a sign that impulses all of us to a group of consciousness, so that if you are going to do what your heart is telling you, your own sign will send you your group of work or is going to send you an impulse that maybe it solve this energy of someone your this need of yours maybe what you're looking for is a group a group to accomplish some work so you ask yourself pray to be clear about that because these contacts that you have, subjective contacts with nature, maybe you would have to find a group that takes care of nature. But that is not a, a device or an idea, it's just a reading of things that you, of a set, set of things that you put here, and you, if it was, if it is real, and if you are in Capricorn, and if that should happen somehow, you will find a group and you are going to follow this intuition of yours of being together with nature and who knows, maybe you'll find if it's the case and if it's in your destiny and if the moment has come, you will find some activity. But the reading of that is that it would be a group that would serve nature. Let's, let us see. Pray for having, to, for being clear about that. And another person say, says that she just read the book, Time of Retreat and Time of Vigil. And when she read that book, she had a dream in which she was inside of a room where there, there was no furniture, and inside of that room, there was only water as the room was a pool and she felt a lot of peace while she was in that room in that water and that this was an effect that the book produced in her she had this dream right after she read the book well this book Time of, vigil, time of retreat and time of vigil caused a lot of attention for the symbol, symbolic life. So there was an inner movement with you and you had that dream. The reading of this dream that you were in a room where there was no furniture, there was nothing and only water until a certain high from the ground and you were immersed in this water, that means that you should Simplify the most of your life. That would be the room with nothing, clean and with nothing. You should simplify the most your life in this moment and do a work of self-purification. Water means purification. So you, in your simple life, in your well-organized life, so organized that there is nothing on the way, nothing tumultuous in that. It's a clean room. You do this sort of clean in your life and you will be purifying yourself and then you will have a greater contact with the book and then you go back you to read the book because if the book give you this stimulation if your book gave you the signs to you it's a it's a sign that you might read it again you might look 
look for it and you might read some parts be again that it will give you an information a little more deep from this moment on. This book was written for that reason because it will be simulated to have signs and have inner experiences. And here someone is saying that is feeling in the work of Figueira a great uh, a great concern about our work with the kingdoms, especially with the animal kingdom, and that she feels in that a uh, very great sincerity, and that she would like to send us a lot of copies of DVDs that deals with this subject, and if she and she's asking if if we would accept this offer that she's gave, she's giving that very honestly. Of course, you send to us this material and, and we will see if it's the case of we spread that. You might you might send this material and, you, and we will thank a lot. And whatever this material is, we will destiny to one thing or another or make to move around here with us depends on the material that will come, but we thank a lot if that happens because our intention is very strong of take care of the kingdoms of nature and of serving these kingdoms of nature, the animal kingdom, the vegetable kingdom, mineral, mineral kingdom, and human kingdom. And a person is saying that she is wanting to finish her addiction of taking of drinking coffee and if drinking coffee is negative well everything that becomes an addiction always of course becomes negative so you automatically becomes negative so you have to look to that vice the the addiction that is negative if coffee became an addiction it's very negative but if you use coffee to assimilate yourself so then even it's not an addiction it's not a good thing to your formation and to your inner work here in Figueira we do not use be addicted to that and we also do not use coffee because it's a way of we renounce to something you know and always and always when we renounce to something we do a sacrifice it is very worthwhile and purpose of life of sacrifice sacrifice and purification all things that stimulate you are taken away or are used with a lot of careful but the important thing is the vice the addiction that grows in you and if you take the coffee off you might be addicted to someone else that addiction finds someone else so you have to take care of the vice but do not be afraid of using coffee but in a way that you not get addicted and you not look in the coffee the stimulate stimulation for you to be awake for you to be that's the thing that you have to be careful about and she said that two years ago that she had in a place surrounded by trees and that she was there calm and that she felt she noticed without seeing anything it was a perception that her back her vertebral spine was being moved and it was like she was 
having a massage in all her spine and that she felt very good later on. So you were being through a spiritual treatment, but you don't need to be connected to that because that things are always very complex. So if you were through a very good well-being and if you solved many things after that, you was you have been through a treatment. So you thank, you thank for it, and you keep yourself in that attitude of gratitude by for that sensation and for that experience have so, solved so many subjects for you. So you keep yourself in this attitude of gratitude. That's enough. And you take that from your mind because this was a fact, an important fact of your life that helped in a certain moment and now take that from your mind and you keep yourself in this attitude of gratitude, gratitude for life. And a person is sending some dreams, a few dreams that where we are able to see if our dreams in the astral plan or if there are dreams in the mental plan because we have a lot of dreams in various plans of consciousness and when the physical body leaves, our astral body might have activities so that that is an activity in the astral plan and when we deep down the consciousness, the physical body is totally relaxed so we might have dreams in the mental plan that is a deeper level of ours and she here did the experience of when things were in the astral plan when it was happened here where there was environment that she recognized and she was seeing it built the dreams were colorful and when the dreams were mental the dreams were not colorful the mental dreams she did not see environments, but she was inside of certain situations that she noticed a lot with the mind, and then there was no colors in that. So you had the dreams in colorful images, it's astral dreams. That dreams has a less value in a certain way than the mental ones because the mind is more in contact with the soul than the astral plan. The astral plan is very independent, doing the things in its own way, creating dreams and living in the astral world, you know. But the mental body is closer to the soul, and when you have a mental dream that is in black and white. Mental dream is never in colors. It starts to appear as colors, might be very pretty, but it's astral. The mental plan has no colors in dreams. So the dreams in black and white are those where you might consider to be mental. So she had a dream on in which she saw before her the number 333 and this number was written in black and white it was a picture in black and white and the number 333 was before her so it was a mental plan it was not a astral dream and by what she said here and by what she's emitting when you're writing this the number 333 is suggesting that you prepare yourself to so that in the future you'll be part of this new civilization because the 333 it's about a new civilization the number three it's very important because life express itself in a trinity and if you have 333 you are before the Trinity three times that calls it's called father son and mother that they also call the Holy Spirit so you are before the Trinity 
each tree is representing the Trinity, and this is a mental dream that it's connecting you to a new civilization that is connecting you to um, a new phase of the human experience over this earth. Some people are already being prepared to the next future. It might happen in a future incarnation, right? Because the new civilization, civilization is being uh, is being waited and pr is being promised, but it's not uh, it's not on on the horizon a lot. Some beings are being prepared, and you, with all of these manifestations that you have, you might all you might be a person that is being prepared for in the future. Might be in another life, you'll be part of this new civilization. So you take note of everything that you dream because when you have a dream and you do not understand the meaning and you write, you put the date and you register that every time you have a dream. But if because if you do not understand that in that moment and then you, you have following dreams that will go opening you up for this spiritual things and when you go back in your notes you are going to understand that old dreams that in that previous times you did not understand so it suggests that you that you are in this such a inner work and this such a symbolic work that you have a notebook to note all your dreams and hope and faith that if you do not comprehend in time you keep noting that with love to this process with love to this work Be so that later someone someday you might understand all of that all of that and sometimes there is an, an anticip anticipation on the symbols that we see because when we see a symbol as you saw, 333, you, even that you did not understand that, that symbol already worked you deep down. If you saw that, it already worked in you, it already imprinted in you a certain effect, even that you do not understand it. So you love this process, you be grateful for seeing this symbol and then you are going to have other dreams because this is as you were in a school as you were in an inner school that first shows you symbols and this symbols are working on you are influencing you and you are going you, you get no noting taking notes from that you be attentive that as you are writing all of that, another comprehension will come to you. We are not used to this kind of inner teachings. And when it starts to showing up, it's a sign that you have to be attentive. Attentive and first very impartial, very neutral, and at the same time loving these opportunities that you are having of seeing life in another way. Some people, you know, are in, in danger of my have the signs, this and my things that are um, unbalanced things, useless things, and that they do not take it seriously. In this way, they are losing opportunities. Sometimes the soul are making an effort to get to reach the person through symbolic ways of impressions that in the beginning are vague. And we have to be grateful for everything we receive when it's about dreams and inner impressions we have to be grateful for what we receive but do not have any preference do not 
have any judgment, be neutral, neutral before all of that, and so at a certain point, clarity comes. But it's important to love this, this process, to love everything that is coming inside of us, you know. And another person is saying that many times we use the term spiritual chaos and she can't understand how a, a thing is spiritual and how it might be chaotic because she has a spiritual level as a superior level and that the chaos does not exist there. Well, you were all right. In the spiritual plan, the chaos may not exist, okay. But the term spiritual is placed in very different ways. It's not only about the superior way. There are people that everything that is not concrete world, that is not material and dense world, they call the spiritual world. And there are people that use spiritual world for the astral world because there are a use of the spiritual world a little inappropriate because it seems that everything that is not clearly material and concrete it's spiritual but then we must see in what meaning this name is being used when we say the term spiritual chaos we are referring ourselves to the chaos in the astral plan, in the etherical plan, and in the mental plan, because people consider everything that is not physical, spiritual. Of course, there must be a chaos in the astral and the mental plan. In the spiritual plan, of course not. And a person is asking if she must take she must drink tea to has to have expansions of consciousnesses of consciousness look we must use some things only when we know where that comes from and we only participate on ceremonies when we know who are leading them, because ceremonies and contact with other plans might happen in a lot of ways and certain contacts with certain mid-plans might be done by contact beings that, that are very evolved, so they are in contact with a mid plan that you might even receive an advice regarding use of teas and everything so it might see who are who is sending that if he is very sane in that plane or if he is involved with things in that plane so it depends of who advise you with the tea and depends on the situation. We have contacts with beings from the hierarchy that give us a lot of advices for things about the physical plan, but we know with who we are dealing with and we are conscious that we are not follow any consciousness any advice that coming from the other side we want to know who is from and only when we have confirmation of what where the things are coming what we might follow and without knowing what it came from and what kind of contact are happening this is not very evaluative and a person had a dream in which she found a very a big box full of old gold there was gold and also wood 
quarters. There were some wood and other gold, gold money. Inside of that box of money, ancient money, there was the ones who represent a positive karma, the golden ones. They were a very good karmic file, and there was the ones of wood that was the illusionary ideas, the false ideas that represent the negative karma. So this big box, it was was presenting to you to exercise your free will. So before a big box, when you have gold and wood money, then you're going to practice your free will and you're going to see what is karmically positive or karmically false or illusionary. Here there is a very important dream and mixed with reality in the life of awake. In the life of awakening, of awake, people, the person was waiting for a bus and in that sidewalk it was coming a lady surrounded by dogs. She was bringing a lot of dogs with her. And in that moment, he felt an impulse. He felt as a as a duty to contribute with that lady. It was obvious that the dogs were all hers and that she was coming with the dogs on that through the sidewalk. He observed and didn't got the bus at the moment. And when he stopped and fixed his gaze, he noticed that a dog looked to him and came towards him. And then he stopped and the dog also stopped looking at him. And then he was very touched by that. The thing is, it's not we who choose the animal that should be with us. That's a principle. The animal is the one who should choose us. So if this lady was coming with a lot of dogs, she had a task taking care of all of that dogs and there there is a lot of people that has a lot of dogs to lead uh, these dogs to the others you know I, I know a few people who has that task so she was coming with all of that dogs and one of the dogs recognized in you his tutor this is what all of that means he then before that look he said that he had the intention of being with that dog and but then that lady just had went away and he followed her and he reached the place that she were living on and he saw that she had all of that dogs that she sustained and she supported and that he saw that she was not a, a wealthy lady and then he also recognized a way of serve and from that moment on he helped he started to helping that lady in the financial way and taking things for the dogs and everything and she felt very fulfilled by that after this experience and he all the all nights he had every night he had the habit of praying for the kingdoms of nature and after that after that fact this episode his life of prayer was much more true in him and he asks what this might represent to him deeply 
Well, it seems a very symbolic way and that marked you a lot. And then the fact that you present yourself to that lady and help all of that and everything had happened this way. So you look to pay attention in all of that, what everything what happened because you have a, a way to do in the service of nature and to the kingdoms. And the kingdoms are not just the animal kingdom, they are the mineral and the vegetable kingdoms. And all of that kingdoms is in an extreme situation of mistreats and incomprehensions of everything that happens with them. In, so you, it seems that you might be someone who might help a lot in this work of the kingdoms of nature. When I received this, I remembered that you might inspire yourself. There is a very important book called To Live the Love to Dogs, Living the Love of Dogs living the love to dogs. It's good to be in touch with this book because here there is a, a energy of opening the hearts to all those ones who do not have the heart very opened towards the kingdoms of nature. As this book has no commercial commercial intention, that's that's why I'm presenting this book, because it's really an instrument very important for us to open our hearts to so many problems before what humanity is dormant. This book was edited by Irgin, who is a non-profit publisher. So with a very freedom, I'm suggesting you to look for it and all the ones who have the interest in animals and who might have the need of open the heart a little more before that. Well, here we have a dream, very interesting. It's the dream of a mother whose son dedicated or is being dedicated to the monastic life and after he defined himself about the monastic life she dreamed that she was being an, uh, being through uh, an inner process also she and she was dressed with a monk habit a white habit from the waist up and from the waist down she was using regular clothes she was wearing regular clothes so she saw herself in the dream weared as a monk as a nun from the waist up and with the waist down with regular clothes that was a picture that she saw on a dream after her son announced that she would that he would follow a monastic life and before that she was a little divided if she would also choose on what she was seeing from the waist up or if she should go on with the inferior part of the body well that means that you are divided and it doesn't mean that you are going to the monastic life and or neither that you were going to the regular life it just showed your situation and now you have to after seeing your inner situations your human situation you must pay a, a lot of attention to those things that comes from your inner level because at some point this division are going to be solved you cannot decide anything now or nor accompany your son neither be 
in the normal life while while you are divided you have to wait and see what what is the the side that are going to predominate and you are going to feel that and when some one of the sides start to predominate them to grow you are going to see which is the one who corresponds your aspiration or maybe it's the case of you help the other because maybe it's you have something to do in the regular life for this reason you're from the waist down to the regular life you have something to do there so you have to be before that situation that is a double life you have you be calm before that because certainly one of those signs are going to start to strengthen and then you are going to take a step more securely so it's necessary for you to not stop with your work of prayer you do not stop of sending this work of aspiration to define yourself because then you are if that is very honest and if that's done with a lot of will and not a lot of energy of the will to clear things out and take some attitude that is necessary for you to not be divided this way one of those sides are going to manifest with more strength so we are going to define yourself and go with much more secure security and you are going to you go preparing yourself in a very not personal way without taking part from one side or the other you are going to being preparing yourself because at some point you are going to feel an impulse to one side or the other and then it's going to be a true thing the important thing is that the choice be true the important thing is the choice to be real that's the important thing in your case because you know between mothers and children might have a lot of emotional tendencies of following what your son chose and there was cases where this were very worthy someone that we like her a lot who had a lot of who are a lot in our heart we go on that same path that exists but when as you were you had your dream seeing your body divided it's good for you to go slowly calmly with faith and wait for that division to be to start being defined and then go with security and then you're going to have peace because you really followed what you are supposed to follow thank you everyone